stimming leaf plot is a table that shows groups of data arranged by place value. Uh, let's look at an example of when it would be good to use a stem and leaf plot. Let's say you had a list of test scores that happened in the class. You can see that they range from 75 all the way up to 99. You could make a type of bar graph called a histogram where you group them maybe by um, 10, 70s, 80s, and 90s and show the frequency that each of those scores showed up. So here you can see that we had one test that fell between 70 and 79. Uh, we had three tests here that were in the 80s, and then we had one, two, three, four, five tests that were in the 90s. And by looking at this bar graph, we can see that more people did really well, they got an A, than got a C or a B. But if we take that data and turn it into a stem and leaf plot, we can actually see this, that same information plus more. So t it's sort of like picturing that you take this and rotate it onto its side. <coughs> you can see here that I've shown 75. I've shown all the values of 80. This is 81, 83, and 83. Here we had two tests that were 83s. And then we can see all the 90s, 91, 97, 98, 99. We can still see that because there are more leaves here in the 90s, that we had more people score in the 90s than the 70s or the 80s. But we can see something more specific. For example, here, notice that we had one score that was low 90s, and then one, two, three, four scores that were higher in the 95, in the high 90s. These would probably be considered an A+. So by um, showing the stem and leaf plot, it has two advantages. First of all, it allows you to see exact values. Here in this one, we don't know what those 90s are worth. They could all be right at 90, but we can see here that the exact values, and that allows us to show how data is clustered. So we had a big group in the upper 90s. We can see that they're clustered or grouped together um, really close to 100. The steps for making a stem and leaf plot are listed here. We're going to go through and make a stem and leaf plot using this data that was collected of the number of students at a 1024 club for a series of 12 weeks. So all of these were the, um, the amount of students coming to 24 club. The first step that you need to do is separate values into stems and leaves. For example, the 27, you would separate it to two parts. The two in the tens place would become the stem, and the seven in the ones place would become the leaf. If you had data that was three, three digits, for example, 145, you could separate it still between the tens and the ones digit, so that 14 would be your stem and five would be your leaf. Um, next, you're gonna list stems vertically from least to greatest, with a line to the right. So I'm going to list my stems here, starting with the smallest, going down to the biggest. So I'm going to see that I have data in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, and the 50s. And it doesn't get any bigger than that. So my stems are going to be 2, 3, 4, and 5 to represent the 20s all the way to the 50s. Next, I'm going to, the leaves are listed least to greatest horizontally. Okay? So I need to start with my 20s, and I see that I only have one piece of data that's in the 20s, 27. So that was an easy one to do. Now I'm going to go to the 30s, and maybe I would mark them with a dot, 30, 30, and 30. And now I have to get them in order from least to greatest. So I'm going to go 6, 7, and 9. 6, 7, 9. All right, now I'm going to go to the 40s. I'll mark those a different way with lines. So I had one, two, three, four that were in the 40s. Least to greatest, I see zero comes first. Next is 41. No, now, be careful when you start to list um, leaves underneath of each other that you don't make them more squished together or more spread apart. That'll help you be able to compare your data and have an um, easy to read um, stem and leaf plot when you're done. So I'm going to put the, the one right underneath the seven of the, leaf, of the leaves that I've already started. All right, 41, and then I have a 45 and a 46. And then finally, I'm going to look at the 50s. 
And I'll mark those with the star. 50, 50, 50, and 50. Now I have two 51s. That's my lowest value. You want to remember that every single value is recorded. Even if you have a repeat, you need to list it because it represents another piece of data. So I'm going to do two ones. And then I have a 57 and a 54. 54 comes first, then 57. Finally, I, the, um, I, I'd like to include a key. A key is often included in a stem and link plot to help you know what you're looking at. So um, I'm going to show 2, 7 equals or represents 27. And then the last thing that you want to do is to include a title. So this was um, 24 club attendance. All right. Let's look at a stem and leaf plot that's already been created and answer a few questions um, when analyzing it. Here's a stem and leaf plot that is showing students height in inches in a classroom. And you can see that the data goes from 48 inches all the way up to 64 inches. And this 4 slash 8, or the 4 is the stem, the 8 is the leaf, represents 48 inches. So first, how many students were measured? Well, the easiest way to figure this out is to count the amount of leaves that you have. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there must have been 13 students there this day um, taking part in this data collection. Which height showed up the most? Well, I'm going to see where I see a repeat, and that would be right here, these three fives in a row. So that represents 55 inches, and it showed up three times. So I'm going to put 55 inches. And when we look at data and we see a, a number that sh shows up the most, that's called the mode. So the mode of this data was 55 inches, or the one that showed up the most. Finally, how much taller is the tallest person than the shortest person? So the tallest person, or actually there's two people this height, were 64 inches, and the shortest person was 48 inches. And in order to know how much taller, I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to have to borrow. 6 becomes a 5. This becomes a 14. 14 minus 8 is 6. 5 minus 4 is 1. So the tallest person is 16 inches taller than the shortest person.